<laughs> I have no idea what uh, music words are here, but it's all good. I'm a, still a big believer in music, and it's part of my soul. Also, as you can tell in my videos, humor is part of my soul as well, because I think everyone learns better when they're less stressed, and uh, that's part of my DNA. So let's get to the point. Let's keep going. I'm Patrick Johnston here. I'm the managing broker, co-owner of GoDominicanLife.com and LasTerrenusLife.com, your real estate company here throughout the Dominican Republic. Currently, I'm at my office in Sisua on the balcony shooting video because we were supposed to do outside video of properties today, but it is raining, so we're taking advantage to give education. Uh, in, uh, you always have to pivot just in case, so here we go. Today's video is about what makes a good investment in real estate? What makes a good investment uh, and how do you choose between one thing and the other? A lot of these can be universal. So if you're new at investing in real estate, that some of these will be repetitive. But in truth, uh, a lot of things are unique. Uh, because if you look at, uh, I grew up in a non-tourist rental driven investor market. So that would be the everyday bread and butter tenant that has a real job and a real life and pays a real rent. Uh, but here in the Dominican Republic, we don't have that. Well, you have that, but you also have the greater good, which is the tourist or short-term market uh, that are here for a good time, not for a long time. So you can profit more from that uh, situation. So we're going to come through uh, or go over a, a number. I have here one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 different things to think about when, uh, when you want to decide or evaluate what is good to invest in real estate. So number one, attractive areas for short-term and long-term rentals. So location, location, location is the rule of thumb in anything to do with real estate. But historically, in my mind, in my experience of 25 plus years of investing in real estate, back then we, we did it from our gut feeling and uh, let's call it the main center of town where all the things were, that was the way to do it. But now, thanks to uh, Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia.com, VRBO and a few other ones that we uh, work with on a daily basis, we now have data, data, data or science driven investing decisions and you may think how can that be because the Dominican Republic doesn't even have an MLS system that is correct there isn't an MLS system for real estate sales per se however they are, there are a ton of data on short-term rentals that we have reports and we can analyze right down to the geolocation on, a, on Google map all the assets around you, what the average rent was, what it was by month, by quarter, by season, by one bedroom, two bedroom studio, three bedroom, by condo, by villa, by apartment. You understand what I'm saying? It's amazing the data that is gathered on those systems if you're, you have the commercial version of those things. So the average Airbnb, single person Airbnb, uh, doing their normal Airbnb thing, doesn't have access to these tools. These tools cost money every month, and we use them as a company to analyze assets, to advise our clients on what to do, how to do it. And I am someone, you know, like the hair club for men. I'm not just the president. I'm also the, a, a client. I use the exact same tools to do uh, my investing here in the country. So let's go through that to understand how that works. Obviously, any close amenities from the asset, once you would determine something that is of good value in your mind, which is your gut instinct, and then you do the reports and the analytics that we can do on your behalf, then you look, so those two things check out, then you look and do a, what I call a manage by walking around. So within, say, a half a kilometer radius of what you're thinking to invest in, you do a walk around to understand the banks, the banking machines, the convenience store, groceries, schools, um, any th sort of things like restaurants and takeaways, um, taxi stands where the motor controls pick people up, uh, churches may be important people, maybe a gym, that type of thing. 
So amenities become very important in decision making, not for you as an investor, but for your tenants uh, and future tenants, so you have something to market to them, saying you have all these amenities close by. Number three is a little bit harder, but it's called crime rate, uh, tax history. Uh, those two things are mainly North American thinking. Uh, tax history is pretty simple. In this country, if you have uh, an asset of $150,000 American or less, there's zero property tax on that. So that's pretty easy to do. Uh, but it's not the street value of property, just like North America. It's the tax base value, which is generally about 30 or 40 percent less <coughs> excuse me, than uh, what you have in, um, in street value or retail value. But crime rate, the only way you can evaluate crime rate, because I, I wouldn't go to the police and ask them for crime rate stats here in this country. Good luck. They don't exist. I, I don't even think if you did exist, they would tell you you'd have to pay for them and they, they just wouldn't exist. So remember that manage by walking around? That same uh, half a kilometer or a kilometer radius that you walk? I would walk morning, noon, uh, 5 p.m., and in the night. And I would call like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, 5 p.m., 12 noon, and then early morning. Why? It gets you, you get to see the traffic flow. You get to see the walking traffic. <coughs> Excuse me. You can see also... Uh, the people that come after work, and then you can see what happens in the evening. A post dinner, is, uh, is there bars in the area that become super loud at night, uh, or is a uh, is it a dangerous walk to something within a kilometer? Those are the things that I always do because you want to know and you want to advise and be able to brag about the marketability of a product or property that is, if you have the experience with it. And in real estate, if you understand your real estate asset inside and out, operationally, uh, historically and, and current, uh, uh, accountability, so like every fork and knife and maybe like this, how many pillows you have, so a full checklist of that, and then also knowing the full neighborhood. And it doesn't hurt by actually knowing the business owners in the area. So you can say, uh, hey, the Comato or the convenience store to the prospective tenant, this is the guy's phone number. If you text him from your house, he'll deliver. He knows me, he'll know you. Those things help a lot, and you can drive up the value and justify your rental rates based on how deeply you know your neighborhood, okay? Next one is knowing the size of what tenants want or demand. Uh, there could be, let's use an example. When I was uh, beginning in my investing career, I focused on the student market. I had a company called universityliving.com. This is like 25 years ago when websites weren't even really real, but I had one and we did very well at it. Um, and what I determined is that a lot of university students love to live in groups for all sorts of reasons. And group type of uh, units were not available in the town or city that I was in. And what I mean by group is six, five, six, seven, eight, nine bedroom uh, uh, houses or apartments, uh, multi-level buildings that can be rented to, you know, nine different people in one environment or a group of nine friends. You know, now at 51 years old, I can't even imagine living with nine different friends. But at that age of 18, 19 to 21, that is the coolest thing ever, to live with all your friends and go to school with all your friends. So we created that market, and we created what we called super flats, super apartments, uh, which were basically uh, two or three level houses with that many bedrooms in it. So we created the market, but we determined we knew the market before we created it. So in today's real world, thanks to Airbnb, VRBO, and other analytical tools that we use, we can tell in Sasua, in Bavro, in Las Terrenas, in Cabarete, in Porta Plata City, what are the demand rentals? What is the demand price point? What is the demand for studio, one bedroom, two, three, four bedroom units? So that before you invest in something, you can understand what the nightly rate, average, low and high and average will be, if the demand is high for that style or if it is not. So again, like I said in previous videos, we're not doing things on gut instinct anymore. We're doing it on data-driven, science-driven reports in real information from today or the past number of months that you want to look for 
All this data exists now in all these mechanisms, uh, in apps, but not in the single version that you have, that you work on Airbnb and have one rental. When you're doing it commercially like us, we can tell all of this information. And we give you those reports for free when you're a client with us because we want you to be successful. We want you to refer us. We want you to buy more because you're going to be successful. And we want you to know that if you buy it here, let's call it a, let's say it's a three bedroom and we notice that five bedroom places are extremely low in quantity and extremely high in demand. You may put two more bedrooms on the house, either on top or in the backyard. Examples of data-driven decision-making to support your financial uh, options and ways to make great investments in real estate. Next thing is know your market inside and out. Like a good real estate agent and team and brokerage, I insist on my team knowing every single detail about communities, about services in communities, about restaurants, bars, comados, churches, gyms, grocery stores, taxi stands, nightclubs, bars, where to get your laundry done, the best pizza restaurant, the best delivery for rum, wine, beer, and cold, everything cold, uh, who is available for a taxi 24 hours a day, who's available to deliver it on a motorcycle concho, which is a delivery system to you. You understand what I'm saying. When we know all of that information and we have all of that contact, you know your market inside out. It's not just about the two bedroom apartment or condo you want to buy. It's knowing about all of the support services in it. I'll give you an example. Look at our, you, you're watching our YouTube channel right now, right? Say yes. Thank you. Thank you for watching, by the way. But when you watch our YouTube channel, you'll see that I do um, probably the educational component and awareness of our market is probably 80% of our videos. 80%. I, sh I showcase uh, different bars, different restaurants, different facilities, different experiences you can have. I give education videos like this. And then I show you property. Because my job as a real estate agent is no different than you as an investor. I'm educating you on the market and the potential because investing is fairly easy because that's what an everyday realtor will do. But a great in, a realtor system like ours and our team work with all the support services to bring the value and support to you as an investor. That is extremely important to do for your consumers, or sorry, your renters. And how you can do that is that you have a, a single sheet of paper when they rent and you send it to them on email and you break it down and you have all the contacts and names of all these people, you have their WhatsApp number and you provide that to them. It's, it's the secret sauce on how to do whatever they need to do in the first 24 hours. And you could put people on a distribution list to let all of those people know your new tenant is arriving on this date and they may be contacting you and thank you for helping them. It's called service, it's called market knowledge, and it helps you get more value uh, for your renter, which gives you more value in your pocket and your investment. Next, uh, what makes a good investment in real estate? Well, you have to simply put, it's one of the safest investments ever that you can do. Look, uh, I'm, I've never been a stock kind of guy um, be, because I can, it's speculative at best. Unless you have the data-driven knowledge and experience in that, you really can't be successful randomly in buying stocks. But with real estate, you can buy something and improve on it. You can improve on it by way of the cash flow. You can improve it by putting solar panels to, uh, uh, in an inverter system to have uh, energy efficiency. You can improve the landscaping. You can then improve photos and video and drone work to make your appearance better, real, but better, for renters to find you globally. You can uh, do a whole bunch of these things, including partnering in with us for, you, for us to give you the management and the rental ability, and all of these extra services are just included when you work with us, which improves your cash flow, gives you a better retention rate of tenants, et cetera. So the real estate is the safest investment ever, for simply that reason, is that you can really change 
your investment for the better. The flip side of that is if you sit on your butt and do nothing and watch your asset go like this and don't reinvest in it, it can be a, a bad investment. But that's up to you. It's not really up to the consumer. It's not up to the market. You can have a really shitty house all around you uh, that is in disrepair, but you can make yours golden and win every time. They could be competing on the local market only, and you take no local market, only do with uh, international tourists. So there's a hundred ways to do it, but it's one of the safest investments you can ever do. Uh, the other ways to uh, think about what makes a good investment in real estate is that there's multiple ways to invest. In a previous vid video, which I'll put the link down below, I talked about all the different ways that you can invest in an example, but I'll just mention them quickly. You can do pre-construction, you can have generational financing, you can have group investing with friends and family or others, uh, you can do house hacking, uh, you can be a wholesaler of a contract by put it under contract and then sell it, you can buy an undervalued, unappreciated asset in real estate and improve on it and then either sell it, retain it, or rent it. So it, there's multiple ways to invest in it, but if you buy one piece of stock, how do you improve on it? It's only the market and you can't control the market. So in real estate, you can control the market, you can control the content, and you can control the marketing. All right, the other thing is real estate is valuable in many different ways. Different ways meaning you can improve on the physical condition of the asset to make it more valuable. You can improve on the imaging of the asset, meaning the showcasing of video, drone, and photo work to drive rental flow and bring more money. Uh, but most importantly, location and cash flow. So if you had a, because if you had a, let's call it a three unit building, and you bought the example of the rents were $200 per unit, just, just using easy numbers, so $600 in, in a month, because it was always rented to the local market, you took those tenants and they naturally left or uh, for whatever reason and you had an empty building and then you repositioned the building so you made some improvements on it you put stainless steel appliances granite countertops you changed the tile flooring you updated the windows whatever efficiencies you want to talk about then you took better photos video and drone which we would naturally do for you and then the rents become total on the short-term market a thousand dollars a month per unit so you go from $600 a month in gross income to $3,000 a month in gross income. What is the value of that building to somebody else then today? Has it doubled? Has it tripled in value? Because cash driven, cash flow driven, ROI, return on investment real estate, always uses a cap rate to establish the value of the property, which is the actual return on investment that you can achieve. I'm gonna do a totally separate video on cap rate and ROI shortly but that is the point multiple family rental property you can improve purely on the cash flow the value of the property it hundred percent I did it my entire working career next couple things I want to talk to you about diversity diversity it's always good as you continue to grow your investments in real estate is that you don't buy all of the same thing you don't all buy studio apartments or two-bedroom apartments or three-bedroom villas. I think you have to look at the top market, the secondary and the third level market in demand, but also look at, say, the past three years of where each of those categories have risen, have they changed, have three-bedroom units become now secondary when they were number one, or as the number three let's call it one bedroom apartments, are they now most popular, but three years ago they weren't as popular? <clears throat> Data-driven, science-driven information that we can provide for you will always allow you to have diversity. So I would always invest in what is working right now, but also what is coming up behind it, because you can really make sense of that. You know, uh, at the end of the day down here, if you th think the, the rental market, for the most part, for non-resort type of uh, forks and knives kind of accommodation are always going to be a one or two bedroom apartment because they're a couple and a couple could have you know some couples sleep in separate bedrooms or 
they wouldn't want to have one bedroom and then an empty bedroom for a daughter, a son, or a friend that comes to visit. So there's a whole bunch of ways we can analyze that by location and by zone to see what's best for you. Last couple of reasons I want to talk about of good reasons to invest in real estate is that you can lower your personal income taxes. It, the simplicity of that is if you own your own home, you have to pay your expenses for your asset on your net income that you generate after taxes in Canada. In the reality, as an investor in real estate, your gross income comes in, you deduct all of your expenses, you deduct appreciation, and you pay taxes on what is remaining, which is very little on the paper trail, because depreciation is a large benefit to a client that has an investor in real estate versus in Canada, personal family homes that you live in are not depreciating in value from a tax perspective. And there's a big difference in that. Number three, or the final one, I should say, is passive income. The greatest investments in real estate are the ones that spit out a positive cash flow and give you more money in your pocket every single month to improve your life or in, to invest in future real estate. So I'm Patrick Johnston, managing a broker here at Go Dominican Life and Las Terrenas Life here in the beautiful Dominican Republic. My WhatsApp number is right here, 829-525-1782. Text me anytime. I answer live from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. my time, but I'm always generally texting all the time, so you can always reach me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with any of your investor friends and colleagues that want to understand more about how to invest in international real estate abroad here in the Dominican Republic. Bye for now. Adios from the beach. It's always better at the beach.